where when you talk about gathering, saints of God ought to get happy. Ought not have to push you, prompt you, pull you, press you. When we're able to gather together in the house of the Lord, knowing that the Lord is in his holy temple. If you've come through, know that you've been through, even though you might have to go through. The good news is you didn't come through by yourself. If you're in through, you're not in through by yourself. And if you have to go through, you're not going to go through by yourself. For, so I've just given you three good reasons to give God some strong praise right there. It would be my task right along in here to call us to worship, but I've been trying to figure out, Pastor May, how do you call worshipers to worship? Do I have some worshipers in the house today? I don't have to call you to worship. I think if you are, if you are a worshiper, all you got to do is hear a certain sound. And when you hear a certain sound, like God is in his holy temple, let all the world be silent before him. Or when you hear a certain sound that says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Or when you hear a certain sound like you know God has been good to you and you don't need anybody to tell you when it's worship time, saints of God ought to just go ahead and worship. We're here tonight, and you'll hear details of this a little later in the program, but first and foremost, we're here to encounter the Most High God. And then we do have a secondary agenda. For not only are we here to lift up the name of Jesus, magnify and have an encounter with Almighty God, we want to show some love and appreciation to moderator Dr. Steve Bland, who's in the house on this evening. We want to get this right, saints of God. And in order to get it right, in order to do it in a way that pleases God and becomes a blessing to God's people, we got to have God in it. The only way to have God in it is to call on the name of Jesus. We got a name tonight, y'all. With that name, we have what we need to enter into the spirit of worship. And as we enter into the spirit of worship, accessing the power, the floodgates of love and adoration to our God, then we're able to feel love and fuel love and cover our moderator with love. Can we do that tonight? We gonna do that. I bless God for each and every one of you that are present and if you have a program, we're going to proceed thereby. There's only one change, maybe two later on, but right now there's only one change that we want to note on our program. And I'm going to call the names of the individuals who are going to be the most immediate participants and contributors to our program. Therefore, you will not see me for another few minutes as we flow according to the printed page of the program. I'm going to ask young Jacqueline, Jacqueline Reynolds to prepare to come. She's going to lead us in our scripture reading. After that, none other than the proud pastor of the Oasis of Hope Church. My friend, my brother, Pastor Claude Allen May will lead us to the throne of grace. After that, we'll have greetings by Reverend Michael Evans. And then we'll have music music ministry of Kevin Stewart Jr. And then Reverend Dr. Jackie Nelson will come and she will share more detail as to why we are here on this evening. And then I'll come back and we will present our felicitations. 
We shall proceed in that order. Jacqueline? Good evening, everybody. <coughs> Ephesians 4 through 13. The gifts God gave to the church. apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of saints, for the work of the ministry, for edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the uni unity of faith and of, and of the knowledge of the Son of God a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Thank you. Amen. Eternal God, our Father, as we come before you on this day, Lord, we recognize that you are God, and above you there is no other. And we can't ask you of anything, God, without first telling you thank you. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the breath of life today, Father. And because the only day we are promised is the one that we see, we want this to be the most productive day in you possible. As we move from morning to afternoon and now here in the evening, Lord, let your name be glorified and lifted up in all the earth. And we are thankful, God, for this occasion 
We are thankful for the one Heavenly Father that we honor tonight. Your scripture is very clear in this area, for you have said in your word to give honor to whom honor is due. And if there is ever one who is certainly due honor, it's Reverend Dr. Steve Bland, Father. So we give you praise and thanks for him, Father. We thank you for his commitment to Michigan District, Father. We thank you for the years that he has served faithfully as our moderator, Lord. But most of all, Father, we thank you for his servant's heart, Father. One who does not want to seek to be served, but one who serves continually and with integrity, Father. So for that, we say thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the one that will break open the bread of life, Father, Dr. Chapman. We pray, Lord, that you use him as you've never used him before. We thank you for all of those who are in attendance tonight, Father. Let this be a glorious celebration of your goodness, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us give God some praise. No, I'll say that again. Let us give God some praise. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, why don't you give God some praise? Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise must continuously be in my mouth. We welcome you. We greet you. I greet you on behalf of New Bethel Baptist Church. I greet you on behalf of Michigan District Baptist Association. But most of all, and most importantly, I greet you on behalf in the name of Jesus Christ to celebrate and give honor, double honor as the Bible teaches us, to a great man, to a great mentor, to a great spiritual father in the Reverend Dr. Steve Bland who for many years has provided us support and impact and change in programs in our community. So we greet you. We ask you to give God praise in this moment. To give God praise in this moment. My pastor teaches us to give, uh, give our peers their flowers while they can yet smell them. So today, tonight, we give Reverend Dr. Steve Bland his flowers to show him appreciation for all he has done for the Michigan District Baptist Association. We, we thank you and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, that was a command. Can you stand on your feet and clap your hands and open up your mouth and give God praise? Y'all still just sitting there looking at me. Can you stand on your feet and open up your mouth and give God praise? Come on, has God been good to anybody? Come on, has God kept anybody's mind? Come on, has he kept you all week long? The Bible says that everything that has breath Praise the Lord. If you've got breath in your body, you ought to be praising him. Come on, somebody shout out Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor? Tell him, say, I need the Lord to come by here. Come on, one more time. Can you look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor? Tell him, I need the Lord to come by here. Come on, can you clap your hands, church? Come on. Who is this King of Glory? Who is this King of Glory? The Lord God strong in my day. The Lord God mighty in battle. Lord God mighty in battle. No one else like Him. So lift up your hands, all ye gates, so He can. Come on in. Come on, can you clap your hands, church? Come on. Come on in, say. Come on in. Let's say it again from the top. Who is this King of Glory? Who is this King of Glory? The Lord God, strong and mighty. Lord God, strong and mighty. He's the Lord God, mighty in battle. Lord God, mighty in battle. No one else like Him. So lift up your heads, for He came so He can. Come on. Say it like this, 
Just listen. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Oh, Lord. Come by here, you say. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Come church. Say, come by here, Lord. Let the people of God say amen. Say amen again. I wonder where you'd be if the Lord hadn't come by here. I wonder how you act if the Lord hadn't stopped by your place and let you know 
that he still had you on God's mind. Come on, give God some praise. Wonder what you'd do in the midst of a pandemic if the Lord didn't cover you and keep you. We need to give God some praise because God stopped by and did what only God could do. Come on and give God some praise in the house tonight. Amen, amen, amen. We do honor and give praise to God who keeps us in spite of us. The Lord is good and worthy to be praised. I do give honor to, um, I honor to read tonight to um, Pastor Steve Bland Jr., our moderator, our brother, and our friend, to all of our preachers that are here and all of you, my father's children, I greet you in the name of a risen Savior. My assignment is to do the occasion uh, for tonight. The occasion is to give reasons as to why we are here tonight. Some 10 years plus ago, God decided there needed to be a leader. And what I found out, uh, Pastor Bland, is that when God decides to give a leader, it has nothing to do with us. We can have all of the elections. We can do all of the appointing. But unless God gives the anointing, we just had somebody stand up and take a position. But some 10 years ago, God knew that Michigan District needed a new leader. And so he set in place Dr. Steve Bland Jr. And let me tell you about what it means to set in place. Because see, when we started out 10 years ago, there were some things, though he was anointed for the position, that he had no idea what it was gonna entail in the position. So God knew that 10 years ago that Michigan District had to have one that was positioned, one that was prepared to carry this district to where it needed to go. We didn't know 10 years ago that in the middle of your appointment, there was going to be a Flint crisis. But God knew, so he sent us a leader. A leader that knew what it meant to gather up people, get on buses and drive down to Flint to take water and serve those that could not serve themselves. Ten years ago, God knew that the women of Michigan District needed to be encouraged to continue to make dresses for little girls in Haiti so that they would be clothed like Matthew 25 said, that our responsibility is to clothe the naked. God knew 10 years ago, we didn't know, that while we were on the battlefield, that God was going to call one of your soldiers home from the battlefield. But because he positioned you to handle the battlefield, when a soldier goes home, the Lord knew we needed leadership. 10 years ago, God said, I need to have the right person in place because we didn't know that there was going to be a pandemic. And so instead of us shutting down at Michigan District, when the pandemic hit, Michigan District was the only district that could hold its Congress in the year of the pandemic. After the Congress, after our leadership allowed the Congress to go forth, we were told that we had to shut it down. God knew that we needed a leader. So we are here tonight, not because we've done so well, but because God has appointed well. So we've come here tonight to celebrate, to encourage, and to let you know, Dr. Bland, we appreciate all that you've done for Michigan District Baptist Association. We've come here tonight, our occasion is to tell the Lord, thank you for this man of God. Thank you for keeping him. Thank you, oh God, because when he got down, God stood up. We've come here tonight, the occasion says, to encourage. The occasion says, to 
to celebrate. The occasion says that we are to give honor to whom honor is due. Tonight, Michigan District and everybody that's in this room, I want you to stand on your feet. I want you to put your hands together and I want you to give God some praise because 10 years ago, the Lord knew what Michigan District needed. Thank you, Dr. Bland. Thank you for holding up the bloodstained banner. Thank you, Dr. Bland, because you taught us how to keep moving even in the midst of a storm. Thank you, Dr. Bland, for allowing us to follow you as you took us to the next level that God desired us for us to go. God bless you and thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, bless the Lord, saints. Come on, bless the Lord. Listen, we want to get ready to receive felicitations that have been sent in via a virtual technological approach. But at the same time, I want to ask every pastor who's in the house this evening, come on, let's receive Pastor Tellers Chapman as he comes. Right there, Doc. I want to ask every pastor in the room to come to the choir stand. Every pastor, if you're a guest pastor, if you are certainly a pastor of Michigan District, I'm asking you to come up to the choir stand. I heard Matt King Carter say in the context of National Baptist Convention that some pastors gonna need to join the usher board to go to heaven. So I'm not asking the pastors to come to the usher board area because those pastors aren't here tonight. But I want to ask every pastor, every pastor to come to the choir stand. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for being here. Thought I saw Dr. Richard White III here. I want to ask him to come forward as well. Listen, we certainly come to appreciate. Thank you so much, Dr. Jackie Nelson. Let's bless the Lord again for Dr. Jackie Nelson. I want to make sure that all of the leaders of Michigan District are real close. As a matter of fact, let me do this logistically while we get ready for our videos. I want to ask all of the leaders of Michigan District to come to this. This is not the mourner's bench here. It's just a vacant pew. I want to ask all the leaders of Michigan District to come to my right here. Because in time, we want to be in order and we want to have structure. We want to be able to move proficiently and efficiently. All of the leaders, you know who you are, Michigan District, come to the front row to my right. You know, of the many things that we can observe as we appreciate our moderator, the one thing we really need to declare and decree, and that is Michigan District is alive and well. I wish I had some folk in the house that could holler, Michigan District is alive and well. And here's what I need us to do. Here's what I need us to do real quickly. Pull out that cell phone, because Pastor Bland will use a cell phone in worship. I know he will. And I've come to recognize that no longer are they a tool of distraction. They can be a tool of blessing. Pull out your text, pull out your cell phone and go to that text thread. Every one of us have them. Got about 20, 30 people on a particular text thread. Go to that text thread and text a group of people that Michigan District is alive and well and can be seen on Facebook Live via Liberty Temple's platform. Text somebody right now. Let them know Michigan District is alive and well, and they can be seen on Liberty Temple's Facebook Live social media platform as well as Liberty Temple's social media platform of YouTube. And next time we gather, we're going to make sure that we're live with Michigan District's Facebook Live. Amen. Tech, we are waiting on you now. We're ready for the videos of, and I don't know if they're going to be in this order, but we bless the Lord for Dr. Wallace Mills, who's the president of BME State Convention. 
Reverend E.L. Branch, who is a pastor emeritus of the Third New Hope Missionary Baptist Church, and Reverend Dr. James Perkins, who is the past president of the Progressive National Baptist Convention Incorporated. Don't know if they'll come in that order, but however you all do them, let us receive them. We can get a little more sound. Uh, Pastor Steve Bland, moderator Steve Bland, President uh, Steve Bland, the Reverend Dr. Stephen Bland. I am so honored, man, to be able to honor you on today uh, and to salute you uh, for what you have done and what you are continuing to do uh, in the work and life uh, of the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, Psalms 37 and 23 says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his ways. Uh, my brother, when we pause and look at what you have done, what you have achieved, and what you have strived to achieve by giving leadership to the Michigan District Association, I want to take a moment, man, and applaud you uh, and to salute you uh, for being the individual that you have been down through the years. You have given great leadership uh, not only to the, to the Michigan District Association, but you have also given great leadership, great words of encouragement. Uh, you have stood with us and supported us uh, that we strive to give leadership to our state convention. Man, you have been right there walking with us along the way and helping to guide us and helping to direct us to, to being the people uh, that the Lord desires of us to be. And man, I'm so appreciative for you for what you are doing and what you shall continue to do in the lives uh, of the believers. Thank you, man, for just being who you are and blessing us in so many great and unusual ways that when we pause and examine your leadership, when we pause and look at who you are, Dr. Bland, you have made a difference in the lives of so many individuals. I want to take a moment and thank Michigan Dif District for taking some time today and to honor you on this evening because you are a brother who is certainly worthy of the honor and certainly worthy of us taking the time and blessing you on this uh, evening. I wish that God will continue to bless you and that God will preserve you for many years, that your message, that your life, and that your living can continue to be a blessing in the lives of so many individuals. Remember now, the record says in the scripture, and the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And we pause today, Dr. Bland, to honor you without hesitation to honor you because we know that you are a good man. Man, I'm praying for you and praying God's continued blessing upon you. On behalf of the BME State Convention of Michigan, we salute you, we honor you, and we bless you as you continue your journey of leading God's people in an unusual way. God bless you, man. Have a smile upon you is our prayers. President Mills. Greetings, this is Pastor E.L. Branch, Pastor Emeritus of Third New Hope Baptist Church. It is my distinct pleasure to celebrate moderator Steve Bland for 10 years of service to the Michigan District Baptist Association. Dr. Bland, thank you for the stellar leadership you've provided for an entire decade to one of the greatest associations this side of heaven. You followed in the footsteps of some of the greatest pastors and preachers this world has ever known. You served with distinction and gave first-class leadership during some of the most turbulent times in our nation and around the world. I join with so many others in saluting you for being the God-anointed leader you are. On a more personal note, I've known you for years many years. You've shown extraordinary kindness to me since our very first meeting. That's just the kind of person you are. Our friendship has grown and continues to grow. We've traveled the world together and have played some of the finest golf courses in the land. Thank you for your friendship, man. You're a preacher 
and pastor par excellence, your husband and father and grandpa. Your wonderful church, Liberty Temple, is blessed to have you, and our denomination is blessed also because of the gift of God in you. Our city, state, and nation is better because of you. You continue to give of yourself even to the point of sacrifice. That's leadership at its best. Let me congratulate you and wish you the best as you go forward in life and ministry, knowing that the bland man will continue to be there for us all. Stay strong, my brother, and keep up the good work. Give Lady Jeanette our love and keep it going full speed ahead. Much love and many blessings upon you. Good evening, everyone. I'm so sorry I couldn't be there in person today. My husband and I were celebrating our 33rd wedding anniversary. However, it is with great privilege and an honor as the president of the youth department of the Michigan District Baptist Association that I say a few words of gratitude to moderator Bland on behalf of the children and youth. We want you to know that we thank you and that we appreciate you. I always came with my hand out saying that the young people, we don't have any money. And guess what? Moderator, you never ever said no. And we appreciate you. The women of our district never, ever said no. And we appreciate them as well. From our youth explosion on bullying to tear down to our mission projects, one being the Cass Corridor area where we serve chili, hats, we pass out hats, gloves, scarves, Bibles to the homeless to our Snow King, Snow Queen program, where we featured the talents of the children of our district, to our Education Week, where we focused on making disciples for Christ, to our College Bound program, where we wanted the young people to know in our district that whether you attend a university, a two-year college, a trade school, an apprentice program. We wanted the young people to know that education is important. And to our explosive Black History Prayer Breakfast at Messiah was always off the chain. Moderator, your financial support meant a lot but your presence as our leader meant more. You were always there. We made an impact in the lives of the children, teenagers of Michigan District. The youth department want to say to you, we will be forever grateful for your love, for your support, for your knowledge and for your wisdom. And we want to say, God bless you and God bless your family. Thank you. Pastor Bland, I am honored to congratulate you on this wonderful occasion when we celebrate you and thank God for you for the wonderful leadership you have provided. You have for the past 10 years served the Michigan District Baptist Association. You have served the Baptist Council of Detroit and vicinity. And of course, you have provided stellar pastoral leadership for the Liberty Temple Baptist Church for the past 18 years. You have provided this leadership in a challenging and difficult time. You've led us through the virus, You've not ceased to work tirelessly to help educate our people on how important it is for us to vote. You have taken stands against all of the racist, white supremacist acts that we have seen in our country, in our state, and in our city. 
And we salute you on this wonderful occasion because you so much deserve it. Of us, all of the compliments that you will receive during this celebration, I hope most of all that you are here resounding in your spirit, the voice of our Lord, as he says to you, servant, well done. Doc, you've done a great job, continue to do a great job, and know always that whatever I can do to help you and to assist you in any way you have but to call on. May God bless you, may God strengthen you, and congratulations, and God bless you. Gay Dignago to come and she will give our final felicitations for this evening. Dr. White. Praise and it is a blessing and an honor to be here tonight to our presider, Dr. Little John, and to our preacher for this evening, Dr. Chapman, and to all of our pastors and preachers uh, who are here, and certainly to all of you who are here today, we greet you in the strong name of Jesus. Certainly we praise God for, amen, our honoree. If you don't mind, would you put your hands together for the one and the only, Reverend Dr. Steve Bland, Jr. Come on, you all, let's celebrate him tonight. Certainly we praise uh, God for him, and we thank God for the stellar leadership that he has given to the Michigan District. We praise God for uh, the work that he has done. And I know that every pastor and leader uh, in here can agree that it has certainly been a challenge leading in a pandemic. And we praise God for his leadership, not only here to the Liberty Temple uh, Baptist Church and to Michigan District, but also to the Council of Baptist Pastors of Detroit and vicinity. And we're here tonight to let you know that we love you. And we thank God for you. We praise God for uh, your leadership. And we thank God that all the Lord has allowed you to do as you have led this district in this very trying time. Ten years of leadership. How many know that's a blessing? And we praise God. Come on, amen. We're here to celebrate tonight. Amen. And we thank God for what the Lord is doing with you. And we encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. Keep running the race. And I know uh, that you're in good shape for the shape you're in. So keep, so keep pressing forward in the name of Jesus and know that we love you and we're behind you. May God bless you and keep you as our prayer. Amen. Giving honor to God who is worthy of all honor and praise, to the leadership of the association, to all those that are in the pulpit with me and all those that have a commitment to ministry, to the officers, members, and friends of Liberty Temple, and above all, to my dear friend and brother. I've known Steve Bland for almost 40 years. Uh, our friendship has been characterized by mutual respect, love of family, fellowship that includes eating well, laughing hard, having fun together, playing golf, I used to be able to play golf with him, and then I retired and found out how expensive it was and stopped playing. And our friendship has been blessed by tears that have been shed as we have lost loved ones and called on each other for the support we needed to get through. But most importantly, we, our friendship has been undergirded and blessed by a common commitment to God and to serve God's people, fueled by a clear call to ministry. 
three things that I'm going to say, and then I'm going to take my seat because I'm not the preacher for today. First of all, Steve Bland is a visionary. Scripture says where there's no vision, the people perish. There have been times that Stephen Bland has cast a vision and nobody could see it but him. But he's pressed on. And over time, the vision became clearer for others to follow. Thank you, Steve, for being a visionary who listened to God, and when God gave you the vision, you followed. Secondly, I want to thank you for being faithful and being faith-filled. You are a man of God, not only in Detroit, but when you come out of town to visit with me and visit with my family, wherever I've been, you have had the same character out of town that you have in town. You are a man of faith. You have prayed for my daughters when I needed somebody else other than me to pray for them. You have encouraged folks I know and love when my voice had been heard so often they no longer heard my voice. And I didn't mind turning them over to you because I knew that whatever you gave them, it would be consistent with what God had wanted them to hear. I thank you for being faithful. You have been faithful. And I have a clear sense. I hope God gives you long life. But I'm, I'm just convinced that you will be faithful unto death. Third, because of your integrity, you are a leader worth following. You don't send folk anywhere that you're not willing to go. You didn't send folks to Flint. You went. You didn't send folks to Charleston. You went to Charleston. You didn't send folk to the state capitol. You went to the state capitol. You didn't send folk to Washington. You went to Washington. And you have stood by your people in the midst of difficult times. And you have spoken truth to power with integrity. Steve Bland, thank you. I wasn't part of the Michigan District Baptist Association, but the Michigan District Baptist Association can always be proud that you have been their president because you represented them well wherever you've gone. And I thank God that I can call you my friend. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Is Sherry Dignago here? If she is not, Dr. Kevin Harris is going to come at this time with a declaration from the clerk's office. Dr. Harris, let's receive him by saying amen. Amen. Glory to God. Giving God praise and honor for all of the men and women of God who are in the sanctuary tonight. <clears throat> I'm so humbled um, whenever I'm in Dr. Bland's presence. When I first met around 2008, 2009, 2010, and I was managing a campaign for, at that time, what would be a future state representative uh, by the name of Leslie Love. Uh, she hadn't won yet. She was years away before she would ever win. And it was my job to go in to connect with pastors in the community and uh, try to facilitate um, who I was working for at that time or, or the candidate to be able to come before the people through the pastors. And as you all know, pastors just don't let anybody in their pulpit, uh, especially political folks. Amen. And that was my job to do. And I, I made that connection with uh, Dr. Bland at that time. And I began coming to different 
community meetings that he, was, he would have. He was always in tune with what was happening in the community. Um, unbeknownst to me, it would be years later because I was always in ministry. I was always doing outreach ministry, always in the youth homes, always wherever I went, I was ministering. But I had no idea that years later in 2017, um, I would be a candidate to be pastor over at Nazarene Baptist Church. By that time, Representative Love was a uh, state representative. I was her chief of staff. Um, and we continued that great relationship that began to be built. But unbeknownst to me, the church had went to Dr. Bland uh, to appoint um, a designee pastor um, at the time because the church was getting ready to fall apart, an interim pastor. Uh, during that year time that they were doing the search, I would put my resume in, my application, um, and there, after that, I would come under the wings officially of uh, Reverend Dr. Steve Bland when I was elected as pastor uh, of Nazarene Baptist Church. Since that time, I've remained politically engaged. I have now been moved over to the executive team of our Wayne County clerk, uh, Kathy Garrett, and I let her know that we would be honoring this great man of God, this great example uh, of leadership for myself, and I, I'm not ashamed to say that because I had to learn a lot and I'm still learning a lot on the way. And when things get tight, when things get hot, I look to my brother pastor. This certificate of recognition is presented to Reverend Dr. Steve Bland, Jr., moderator, Michigan District Baptist uh, Association, 10 years of love and service. It is with great pride that I join with your church, family, friends, and community to honor and congratulate you for serving 10 years as moderator of the Michigan District Baptist Association. You have a long legacy of leadership throughout the country, which is rooted in the church being more than an edifice, but an extension of service to the community. Your ministry has achieved many milestones under your guidance. Liberty Temple Baptist Church has impacted the community in ways too numerous to measure, including hosting skilled trades and returning citizen job fairs, voter registrations, education forms, and always being willing to open the doors of the church for neighborhood organizations. We commend you for your steadfast leadership as moderator of this united group of Baptist churches working together to enhance community, the communities they serve and uplift each other. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Matthew 18, 20. On this 21st day of May 2022, this certificate is presented to the Reverend Dr. Steve Bland, Jr. as an expression of respect and appreciation for your service to our community and the Michigan District Baptist Association. May God continue to bless you abundantly. Kathy M. Garrett, our Wayne County Clerk. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Glory to God, glory to God. Well, it's preaching time, saints. It's preaching time. Where would we be if there was no word from the Lord? We thank God. Michigan District Baptist Association and the leadership that it produces. Such leadership is, in fact, personified in the person of Reverend Dr. Steve Bland. But we can go back historically. Think about Dr. T.C. Simmons. Dr. Kelly. Dr. Robert Smith might be in the house tonight. 
certainly Dr. Whitney, who we never shall forget. But of all the strong leaders that Michigan District has birthed one day, and one day soon, we're going to be able to say that Michigan District has birthed the president of the National Baptist <laughs> Convention USA Incorporated. We're going to be able to say that one day, y'all, because we are so grateful on tonight to have with us the one and the only proud pastor of the Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, past president, Baptist Missionary and Education Convention of Michigan, and soon to be the National Baptist President, USA Incorporated. Let us receive none other than Reverend Dr. Tellus J. Chapman. After this selection, the next voice you will hear will be none other than Reverend Dr. Tell us, Jerome Chapman. Stop! 
worship the Lord. Come on, does anyone, anybody want God to make you over tonight? Hallelujah. If there's a praise in you, let it out, will you? <laughs> Honorable leader, friend, bosom brother, golf partner, freedom fighter, pastor, president, moderator and all the other adequate adjectives that are befitting uh, for your identity as a visionary trailblazer leader and co-laborer uh, in this ministry of Jesus Christ in the absence of the bland clan, we bless God for them too. Are they here? There she is, Jan, God bless you. Presiding preacher, my other brother from another mother, Dr. Little John. Amen. All of the preachers and pastors present, Thank God for you, President of our State Congress is here, and moderator for the Fellowship District Association, Dr. Ryan Johnson, and, and uh, then pardon me for walking by you so quickly, Dr. Wheeler, and let this be a lesson to you younger preachers. You don't just overlook legends and pioneers who helped us to get to where we are. Thank God for you and for your presence here tonight. What an inspiration and to the leadership and laity of Liberty Temple and the wonderful uh, leadership of the Michigan District Association. Amen. Amen. God bless each of you all, my district, and um, I cut my teeth. Not that I have so many, but, but whatever I am, good or bad, blame it on Michigan. Amen. Those of you who are attending via social media, and then I have some of our nurses here, my support team and Shepherd's Care staff, thank God for them. And for I can't go anywhere and get away with anything. But I look up and there they are. Amen. So God bless you all. Thank you all for being here tonight. I don't want to belinger the moment. You all, I think there's some food going on around here after this. Am I correct? No, no food? Go ahead. Well, all right. You're going somewhere. So, so bless you tonight, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for thinking of me uh, to be a part of this um, honorable event. Uh, which is reflective of, of, of sacrificial and sincere service that has been beneficial to kingdom and community. Amen. Pray with me, if you will. God, our Father, thank you for grace and love and mercy. Thank you for your care and your kindness. Thank you for this awesome opportunity to serve on your agenda. We already know that uh, we are unworthy, yet because your name is on our lives, you're looking out for your name. And thank you for enabling us to identify with you and 
serve on your agenda. Give me your word now and what it takes to deliver it. Give each of us the capacity to receive it. Give all of us the ability to make it practical. We are careful and committed to give you all the credit therefore. This is your servant's prayer. I pray in the strong and saving name of Jesus, people of God, said amen. amen. There's a word in uh, the book of Philippians, the third chapter, verses 13 and 14. Once you shall have found that passage and read it there, you may see these words. I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version, which reads as follows. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus, searching for something better. Give God some praise for what he's about to tell you. During the height of the civil rights movement, the celebrated love balladeer, rhythm and blues singer Curtis Mayfield and his hit group, The Impressions, made popular a hit tune entitled, Keep On Pushing. Born of the wearied womb of oppression, the lyrical expression and emphasis of the song was designed to do several things. Inspire, enliven, encourage, and energize, and aggravate it and oppress people to reach for, fight for, strive for, and work for the enjoyment of the once prevented and prohibited and often squandered social pleasures and amenities of society and that they were to do it with a relentless spirit that craved for something better. We should therefore never become so content with and accepting of what's so familiar what status quo, what's commonplace until we cease to pursue life for something that's beyond the ordinary, customary, something that is already established, the everyday, everyday, the frequent, the general, the habitual, the natural, the normal, the popular, the prevailing, the routine, the run of the mill, the settling, the standard, the traditional, typical, and the usual. Never become so trenched in tradition and cradled to custom and harnessed by habit that you can't pursue life for something better. This generation, Z and X and coming generations, Enjoy the luxuries and lifestyles launched by the methods and means and minds and messages, struggles and striving and straining, protests and outcry, service and the sacrifice of people who long ago simply wanted something better. They took the brunt of vicious racism which came in the form of fire hoses and the bites of police dogs, police brutality, white supremacy, mounted horses and hooded hoodlums riding around in our hood burning crosses, Ku Klux Klan rallies and signs throughout public facilities that read white only and colored only, but they kept fighting, they kept marching, they kept praying because they wanted something better but today for some people some people 
that they may have it better in their definition of better will do anything to achieve what they call better. They'll plan tricks for it. They'll engage in evil plots for it. Work wrong jobs for it. They'll blow racist dog whistles for it. Occupy Wall Street for it. Cause insurrections for it. And have gullible people climbing capital walls like monkeys for it. They'll try and block qualified black Supreme Court nominees for it. They'll shoot up shopping malls, movie theaters, and even church houses for it. They will sling mud in political campaigns for it. They will pay anything for it, cry for it, beg for it, buy votes for it, hijack elections for it, pay under the table tuitions for it. They will engage in unfair competition for it, make concessions for it, trade for it, negotiate for it, compromise for it, write negative op-eds for it. They will watch for it, refuse to wait for it, lie about election results for it, go into debt for it, sell their bodies for it, swap their spouses for it, take greater risks for it, put up with fools and government for it, raise any kind of hell for it, have sex for it, fight for it, lie for it, cheat for it. Are you there? Have you hung up on me? They'll bleed for it. They'll even die for it. For what they describe and define as better. But my brothers and sisters, the people of God, the ranks of the righteous don't have to, neither will they ever condescend to such a corrupt level of conduct and course of action in order to have what God wants them to have or in order to get what God wants them to get or in order to go where God is taking them, they already know that the one who has before us something better will help us achieve what's better. This is why Paul Lawrence Dunbar rendered answers as to why the caged bird sings. This is why Nelson Mandela gave up 27 years of his life and resolved to have a record as an inmate. This is why Martin Luther would launch the Protestant movement. This is why Muhammad Gandhi would become a model for nonviolent protests. This is why our ancestors took the lacerating whips of Masa, whoever, and successfully conducted the Underground Railroad with the Bible in one hand and a pistol in the other, prayed in brush harbors, fought in the Civil War, refused to tolerate segregated sitting, eating, and living sections in a free but unequal, divided states of America, all because they wanted something better. And quite frankly, this is why Jesus Christ hung, bled, died, and resurrected, and conquered death, hell, and sin, and Satan, and the grave for your halfway saying amen self, so your halfway saying amen self could have something better. And this was the driving force of Apostle Paul, who after having discovered the joy of Jesus, the glory of God, and the habitation of the holy, and the hope of heaven, and the perks of providence, looked back on a life lived outside of Jesus, and the ark of safety, and gave up what he knew that he couldn't afford to keep, so as to gain what he couldn't afford to lose, and exclaimed, I want something better. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. This should be the disposition and constitution of those who aspire to become better. Better than average. Better than the status quo. Better than commonplace. Better than what's usual. And possess more than the mediocre. And I stop by to tell you as a standing trophy and as a living example that in Jesus is possible. And that the ultimate goal for anyone to aim towards is the same goal as that of Apostle Paul who said I press 
Christ or to go for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You need goals. Everybody need goals. You need aim. You need dreams. You need objective. You need something positive to aspire for. And in order to reach your goal, you've got to press forward for better things. The question that we need to ask of ourselves, Dr. Nelson, is, are you pressing for something better? I know you're saved, sanctified, born again, blood bought, blood washed, blood cleansed, heaven bound, feet set on the glory road, hand wrapped up in the wine and chain. Love the Lord with all of your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Already been to the water, already been baptized, soul has been converted, feeling all right. The question is, are you pressing? You may be a faithful, loyal, tithing, and giving registered church member, but are you pressing? You may know your way around the scriptures, but are you pressing? You may very well be a registered voter forever engaged with the patriotic process of Americanism, but are you pressing? You may be a good parent who employs great practices in pedagogy, but the question is, are you pressing? You can bring home the bacon fried up in the pan. You can be a football mom, an independent breadwinner, and walk out of your house looking like a domestic diva every day. But are you pressing? And if in fact you will move forward in the faith and actualize what's best for your future, you will fare well to emulate and employ the principles and practices of Apostle Paul in this declaration and say to yourself, I'm reaching for something better. If my brothers and sisters, we will be successful at this, I'll include you and me so you can say amen. If 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 this will be actualized, we need to adequately evaluate our value. I need to hear about nine of you. I'll make ten who won't mind shouting, evaluate your values. You know, people often indulge in manipulations of other folk because they have no morals. But they exploit other people because they have no value. They molest little children. They hold public office and then undermine their constituents. They sell out their own brothers and sisters for a few more dollars and a little more power. What are you doing being a black speck among a conservative political party in the first place? What are you doing with your wife participating in an insurrection rally and you had a black face garbed in a black robe with a brown gavel in your hand with nothing but Oreo filling underneath. Some people have no values. Michelle Bachman, who was a candidate for the Republican nominee for president, had the nerve to say in lieu of Barack Obama's presidency, we need to restore character to the White House. Now we look back on what we had in the one term 45th United States administration and conclude that we definitely saw no character. She along with other political cronies who fearfully supported a ruthless, arrogant, thin-skinned, narcissistic, high-headed, cocky individual who declared that he wanted to make America white again. People often indulge in manipulation because they have no morals. People exploit others because they have no values. They want us to just shut up and dribble, dunk basketballs, score touchdowns, hit home runs, and sing national anthems. They want us to stand and sing the national anthem, but they don't want us to kneel and protest the racism and police brutality while the anthem is going on. This nation, therefore, in order to make sure that intelligence in black skin wouldn't get any credit for leading the nation to higher heights, condescended to its lower level of patriotism 
by electing a 45th fool for president who had absolutely no character. Talk to me, somebody. Colluding with foreign dictators so as to win an election, that's not character. Having your whole family run the White House and a nearly all white cast running the administration, that's not character. Calling people out of their name because they disagree with you, that's not character. Sleeping with porn stars and paying them off with hush money, that's not character. Separating families at an international border in the name of immigration, that's not character. Occupying the highest office in the land and the most powerful position in the free world with no class, no tact, no dignity, no deportment, no reverence, no self-respect, no discipline, no trust, no virtue, no morals, no apology, no self-control, no decency, no honor. Are you still there? Have you hung up on me? That's not character. How dare anybody say we need to restore character to the White House. The world needs good values. But to see what real value looks like, it behooves us to assess our values. You'll never move forward if you keep looking backwards. You'll never rise higher if you keep, head, keep your head hanging down. Paul said, this is one thing I do. I forget the things that are in the past. I've, I've assessed my circumstance. I, I've discovered now what really means me no good in contrast and juxtaposition to that which I know is most valuable. So I keep on pushing. It behooves us to be extremely discreet, therefore, as to whose value system we embrace. Rather, discover your values in the only one that can change things for the better. Praise his holy name. This is how the lyricists put it when they put pen to parchment and compose these lovely Lord-like lyrics. Time is filled with swift transitions. Not on earth unmoved can stand but build your hopes on things eternal and holy God unchanging. And I'm searching for something better. Friends, if we will actualize or realize something better, we need a, a valid and valiant vision. I need to hear about nine of you. I'll make ten who won't mind shouting, we need vision. You know, the science of sight tells us that sight is the result of light rays entering through the transparent lenses of your eyeballs, whereon there are nerve endings which connect the sight to your optic center of your brain that you may know what you're looking at while you're looking at it. But that's natural sight. There's a difference between natural sight and vision. Paul exclaimed, I'm forgetting what's behind me. That's what I saw. But what's ahead of me is visionary. My brothers and sisters, there's quite a bit that we need to let go of what's behind us. A few years ago in our home was our home was blessed with the life and excitement of our then two-year-old granddaughter. Um, and with there never being a dull moment, there were times when she was, we were entertained by her usage of mic shift microphones and our sing-along song fest, one of which I heard quite frequently at the time. And time after time, I would hear it in her own naive two-year-old musical intonation. Repeating the words of Adina Manzel's song, Let It Go. I didn't know of his history until we had a family day at the movies and watched the movie entitled Frozen. It was an animated film that tells the story of a fearless princess who sets off on an epic journey to find her estranged sister whose icy powers had inadvertently trapped the whole kingdom into an eternal winter. 
But once Elsa declared herself free from the stress and fears that she'd been faced with since childhood, she sung the words of the chorus of the song, Let It Go. Such words of wisdom, my brothers and sisters, are worthy of following because some things are already gone. We just need to let them go. I can't hear too good. Paul says, I forget the things that are behind me and I'm pressing forward to the things that are before me because God has a way, Dr. Wheeler, of working with the rest of your life. Many people are mauled and manipulated by their own memory. They, are there, they therefore allow their past to control their future. They subvert, subvert and sabotage their own success because they suffocate their next opportunity with too much negative retrospect. You didn't feel me. You may be a product of your past. In the words of Rick Warren in his book, Purpose Driven Life, who said we are products of our past, but we don't have to be prisoners of our past. Some things you just have to let go. The enemies that attacked you, the thieves that took from you, the double crosser that tricked you, the liar that talked about you, the chauvinist that wanted to control you, the critics that underrated you, the hands that wouldn't help you, you got to let it go. The races that wouldn't accept you, the heart that wouldn't love you, the business establishment that wouldn't take you, the skeptics that doubted you. There are some things you just have to let go and look forward to the things that God has in front of you. You've been talked about, laughed at, looked over, walked on, shut out, ignored, and insulted. You've been assaulted and attacked. However, you have to look into your future with vision and decide to leave it all behind. Why? Because God can work with what you've got left. I don't think you heard me. What matters most to our future is that God works with the rest of your life. Dr. Little John, in his past, Moses was a fugitive, but God worked with what he had left and made him a freedom fighter. In his past, Gideon was a coward soldier, but God worked with what he had left and made him a courageous general. In his past, Jacob was a corrupt con artist, but God worked with what he had left and made him a patriarch of a nation. In his past, Paul was an indignant and infuriated enemy of the gospel, but God worked with what he had left, made him an influential and affluent and effective preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In her past, Ruth lost her family, but God worked with the rest of her life, gave her a new family, a new faith, and a better future. In her past, Rahab was a prostitute, but God worked with the rest of her life, made her a one-woman rescue mission for the people of God and a relevant relative for our Lord. In his past, the prodigal son wasted his substance on riotous living, but his father worked with the rest of his life and made him a quintessential case for a comeback. In their past, Matthew was a traitor, Mark was timid, Peter was temperamental, Thomas was a skeptic, and Nicodemus was a bigot. Oh, praise his holy name. But Jesus, I don't think you're there, but Jesus worked with the rest of their lives and made them all powerful patrons and proponents of providence and pioneers for the kingdom of God. God can work with the rest of your life. If only we had vision. Oh, praise his holy name. My brothers and sisters, they are not the only ones with whom the Lord worked and whose lives the Lord turned from negative to positivity. We, we are redeemed and we qualify for the list too. We were ill-suited, inappropriate, improper, imperfect, incorrect, inadmissible, incompetent, insufficient, unable, unbelieving, unsaved, and unfit, but the Lord took us in. If you can't say amen to that, close your Bible, go back to the corner and the club. 
We were unfit, unfair, fickle, frail, finite, faulty, fallible, and frangible, wrapped up in these dusty and devilish frames. But the Lord took what we had left, made a preacher out of you, made a deacon out of you, brought you in the church, put you in the choir, and told you to tell a dying world he could save to the utmost. Let me quit. I'm just searching for something better. Anybody here searching for something better other than little old country me? If it will be actualized, Dr. Mosley, you'll need an unwavering vehicle for victory. I need to hear about four of you. I'll make five. Who won't mind shouting, victory. victory. It's necessary, yeah. Dr. Little John, to have things essential for sustenance, security, yeah. and survival. Yeah. But you ought to want victory. Yeah. It's wonderful to have money, friends, and family. But you ought, to want a, you ought to have a desire to declare victory. Yeah. If you're going to make it, my brothers and sisters, if you're going to experience what Paul perceived as better, you're going to need a vehicle to get you there, a fiduciary to help you move forward, manage, meander, and make it in this mad, mundane, messed up and malicious world I have a recommendation for you his name you know in the black church the, the black preacher has a way of inflexing their voices their voice and they, and they celebrate the sermonic expression so so if you don't mind me tapping my African roots, let me, let, me, let me give you a recommendation for your conduit. His name is Jesus. Uh-huh, I'm pressing for the high call of God. And I can get there, but we'll only get there through Jesus Christ I believe I ought to tell you my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus' name in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil and when all around my soul gives way he then is all my hope and stay on oh, Christ yeah solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand he is the one through whom we must go to reach this place called better. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the lifter of our heads. He is the co-creator of the world. He is God's other self. He is Alpha and Omega. He always was and always is and he always will be. He's unmoved and undefeated, and he's never outdone. He's uncalculated and unconquered. He's the light of the world. His name is Jesus. He's the way out of no way. He's the lover of mankind. He's God Almighty. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the everlasting Father. He is the help. He is the healer. He is the overcomer. Oh, praise his name. His yoke is easy. 
His burden is light. He'll mind your business. He'll handle your hardship. He'll redeem you from your sin. Rescue you from your shame. He is our redeemer. He's the savior of sinners. He is our guide. He'll be with you when you have nobody. Oh, praise his name. He'll never leave you alone. He'll never mislead you. He'll never forget you. He'll never overlook you. He'll never forsake you. He'll lead you in the green pastures. He'll lead you beside still waters. He'll lead you in the path of righteousness. He'll restore your soul. He'll walk with you through the valley of the shadow of death. He'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. He'll make your cup of joy overflow. Oh, praise his name. And then he'll give you goodness and mercy to walk with you among the days of your life. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy oh yes the joy that we share and we tarry there none other has ever known go ahead look for better it's in your future strive on look for better I believe I ought to tell you we cannot see in the future we cannot see through dark clouds we cannot see through heartaches but walk on by faith each day on Monday walk on on Tuesday walk on let Jesus be your guide he can see down the road he'll help you carry your heavy load walk on to better if I had about nine I'll make ten who won't mind shouting better oh Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for better. Praise his holy name for better. Thank God you and I already got something better come on bless the Lord one more time for this word of God from Dr. Tellus J. Chapman word of God does what it will do anybody know it won't fail and it will accomplish everything that God has intended. I think we'd be remiss tonight if we just would not at least acknowledge 
that in spite of what the media might say about the church doors, and I will acknowledge the fact that there's some church doors that are closed. But the church door remains a job. Jesus is the door. And if you're here tonight, you have not come in the way of the door that is Christ Jesus. We want to give you a moment. We want to give you an opportunity. We want to make sure that everybody that's a part of this gathering on tonight that have heard this most powerful word on tonight. We just want to know you're saved. We just want to know. We want to be of certain. We, in fact, we want you to be sure. Because you can be in the building but be unchurched. You can know the name but know, not know the power of the name. You can have heard about Jesus but you need an encounter with Jesus. If you're here tonight, we offer Christ to you. Every heart stand. Jesus, blessed Savior, he is worthy to If you're here tonight, come on. We got many churches represented on tonight. From our main aim for this night is that you know Jesus Christ. We'll get you in a word teaching, word preaching congregation. We need to know that you know the Lord Jesus Christ. He is worthy. He is worthy. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, blessed Savior, he is worthy to be praised. Come on, come on, give him praise. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. What a night, what a night, what a night. Come on, bless God for the preacher. Bless God for our preacher, Pastor Tellers Chapman. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Thank God for the preacher. Thank God for the preached word. I want to ask Pastor Jason Mosley to come down. And Liberty Temple, if we could have some receptacles. We want to do this real quick. In fact, we really only need one. Because listen, hear me saints. Everything we raise tonight is going to moderator Steve Bland. Just one offering, every dime, every nickel, and I want you to reach beyond the dimes and the nickels of your purse and pocketbook. But we want to bless Pastor Steve Bland. I want to ask Pastor Jason Mosley to come. Th thank you, deacons. Thank you, but I, 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 y'all just stand by close by. Thank you. I'm going to ask Pastor Jason Mosley, Agilon Baptist Church, and Dr. Damon Mosley, President of the, Na of the State Congress, and we got a guest moderator, and I love this, Pastor Ryan. Thank you, man. Come down, and I want you to share with us to stand and lead us in receiving our offering. Absolutely, Dr. Ryan Johnson. Let's say amen. Now, this is what I'm talking about in terms of fellowshipping with different district associations. I'm so glad to have him here on tonight. Listen, now, pastors, I know most of us have been doing the, you know, we do the Zelle thing, we do the Cash App thing, and I'm, I'm, I recognize that many of you are prepared to give 
through Cash App, and we've made that known. We got Pastor's Cash App. It's been, uh, it's been promoted. Uh, but every now and then, you know, you need to lead by example, which means you just need to pull out the money. Thank you. Thank you. And so I'm asking pastors. Now, I'm, I want to start this with $200, and I'm asking every pastor to do the very best you can. Dr. Mosley, there's my 200 All right. All right. 200 from Dr. Chapman. All right. Amen. 200 from Dr. Bland, Dr. May. Dr. Johnson. Dr. Cross, man, I didn't know who you were, man. Let's go for Dr. Heyman Cross. Amen. Amen. Dr. Brewer's in the house. Bless the Lord. Thank you, pastors. Thank you, pastors. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, pastors. I'm going to ask all of our Michigan district leaders now to come. Now, I need you all to do something for me because we, we, we got to hear from our moderator. So we want to really minimize time. But, but Minister Deborah, can we get a mic? And here's what I'd like for you all to do. Just give your name and say, thank you, moderator Bland. And give your money. Yeah. Now, now listen, listen. I know y'all got a story. I know you got something to share with him. But listen, text him. Text him your sentiment. That way he'll have it as a matter of record. Tonight, we want to be just as expeditious and yet in order. So I'm going to ask all of the Michigan district. going to ask Latanya McCrory. She's going to come. She's representing the youth in the person of Ruth Evans. So I'm asking... Your, your area of ministry, and say thank you, moderator Bland. Brother Deacon Ray Nelson, president of the Layman Movement. We are better Layman because of moderator Bland. Amen and thank you. Amen. Come right on, Dr. Jack. You're right in the order that you're sitting. Right in the order. All of y'all just stand up if you would. Stand right up where you are. Dr. Jacqueline Nelson, president of the Congress of Christian Education. Thank you so much, Dr. Bland. Amen. Amen. On behalf of the Michigan District Women's Ministry, uh, uh, Reverend Patty Dexter is our president. Thank you, moderator Bland. Amen. Amen. On behalf of the Michigan, oh, I'm sorry. I'm Dorothy Crisell. On behalf of the Michigan District Urshers, we say to you, Pastor Bland, thank you for everything. Amen. Boy, y'all doing a super job. Bless the Lord for you. My name is Audra C.A., third vice president of Michigan Women's District, and this is my beloved pastor. I love him. Amen. Amen. Going to ask the ushers to get ready to direct us in our giving. Go ahead, Sister Kennedy. From Esther Kennedy, on behalf of the Michigan District Nurses, we want to thank you, Pastor Bland. Amen. Amen. Latanya McCorry, standing in for our Michigan District Youth Ministry. Thank you for your years of service, Dr. Bland. Amen. Our secretaries, bringing up the read. Valerie Lyle. Secretary for Michigan District Baptist Association. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Ushers, if we could direct the congregation from the rear. On my left, if they can walk to their left, come up the aisle and go around. On my right, if they can move toward their right from the rear and come around. Come on, let's bless our moderator on this evening. Do the very best that you can. Do the very best that you can.
Let's hear a special announcement from the Deacons of Liberty Temple as we continue to give. Good evening. Listen, I know we're celebrating 10 years of Pastor Bland at the Michigan District Baptist Association, and that's, really, that's great. But I don't know if many of you know that we also, this is the time of year in May, that we also celebrating 18 years of Pastor Bland being here at the Liberty Temple Baptist Church. Glory to God. Amen, amen. And listen, we have, I mean, he has taken us to another level. He's teaching, he's preaching, he's visiting, and we're and we, and we going in the right direction. They say we're going north. Amen. So listen, um, we, if you want to donate, uh, we are doing 18 years. We're selling tickets out there to his anniversary um, uh, luncheon, uh, brunch, I'm sorry, uh, brunch, and we're going to, uh, so we'll be selling tickets right out in the um, vestibule out there. You guys are welcome to come and donate, and we'll give you a ticket. We appreciate you, but 18 years, give him a hand for Pastor Bland, 18, right here at the Liberty Temple Baptist Church. Thank you. Father, we thank you for the blessing in giving, thanking you for an opportunity to share with one who has shared with so very many and continues to do so. Let these resources encourage him. Let these resources support his ministry. Let these resources be a blessing to him and his family as he goes forth in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, we could, all right, all right. Do we have a special envelope or something we could put this? I don't want to just, of course, I know he knows what to do with it. But, brother moderator, if you would come, sir, let us receive Reverend Dr. Steve Bland, Jr. Dr. Bland, we, we esteem it a great privilege and a pleasure to, to just be a kind of second chariot dude with you. We praise God for your leadership and all that you give of yourself. You have a way of truly emptying yourself to all that you do. And every now and then, I just believe a, a tangible approach to appreciation is in order. So we just sought to the best way we could just to come together knowing that you are moving, that you are constantly growing, developing, dare I say reinventing yourself. As Pastor Chapman has said, there are bigger things and greater things that the Lord has in store for you. We know that. You're getting a taste of that even now as you give leadership to so many areas. But please accept this as a token of appreciation on behalf of Michigan District Baptist Association, its leadership and its constituents. Our little meager way of saying thank you, sir. Thank you and God bless. Let's hear a word from our moderator. And all the household of faith said, Amen. Amen. 
There's been some preaching in this house tonight. I said there's been some preaching in this house tonight. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise for the preacher of this occasion, my friend and brother, and uh, one who I've traveled with across several chasms of years, and uh, his friendship, as well as his preaching, is not getting worse. It's getting better. Come on, one more time, give God praise for Pastor Chapman, Vice Moderator Large, and our presider tonight, Pastor Orville K. Littlejohn. Give God praise for him too as well, won't you, tonight? Share God's joy. All the pastors who assemble here, particularly the pastors of Michigan District Baptist Association, and also the guest moderators of the BME State Convention that are here sharing with us on tonight, and all the ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ that are in this house. All of you who are uh, persons who are part of this pastoral work uh, and ministerial work, why don't you stand on your feet and let's give God praise for all the ministers of the gospel, pastors, moderators, representatives of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Allow me to just bless you again, each and every one of you, for thinking in that robbery to be with us on today. Secretary of the Council of Baptist Pastors, amen, Reverend Audrey Turner, and uh, First Vice President, uh, Pastor Richard White III, amen, who was here tonight, and other representatives who are here. So our special guest who's going to be preaching for us in the morning on this kickoff of my 18th year here and 38th year of doing the Lord's work as ministry, uh, the retired president of both the Christian Theological Seminary in Indianapolis, Indiana, where he did a tremendous work after pastoring the Zion Baptist Church of Cincinnati, Ohio, and also serving with Tuskegee as Dean of Chapel, also with the Home Mission Board of Cooperative Baptists, and so many other things he's done. And then most recently, he retired the second time as a second president of the ITC, better known as the Interdenominational Theological Center of Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, if nothing else that he is to be credited for, he is the husband of that Georgia peach over there named Sue. And she and he are written on in the sunset down in Florida, retiring now. But they thought it not robbery to come to be with us on this weekend. Won't you help me to appreciatively applaud Reverend Dr. Edward Wheeler. Amen. And Sue Wheeler, who also was a retired administrator and teacher. And uh, I'm grateful that they came out tonight. Most people come in town for an event. They rest up for what they got to do. But uh, I'm grateful that he came to share with this occasion on this evening. And it means much uh, to me. Uh, to the official cabinet of the Michigan District Baptist Association, those who serve in ministry leadership, you've been presented, even though I know you've been minimized in your expression, after 10 years, I pretty much know how you feel. And I'm grateful to God for all of you, for the service and the time that you've taken and the work that you've given, the chasm of this decade. And given the fact that many of you have served up to and through a pandemic and had the capacity to continue keep the Lord's work active, knowing that as churches of our district association, we're stronger together and we're better together. Let me just thank each and every one of you in your own individual way for the work that you have done and the work that you have continued to do, whether it be staff or persons who have served. I know that many persons have given um, individual names in regards to events and things that have taken place. But I'm grateful tonight to be able to say that anything we did was an us proposition. The work that we do is one that is called on by the master. And very few times do you hear when Jesus speaks uh, the pronoun I. 
But even when the writer writes in Hebrews, he talks often about saying, let us. That 10th chapter is a great lettuce sandwich. Uh, when he talks about, let us provoke one another. Let us, therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace. And he gives all the lettuce pieces that we have. And I want to say to you that if there has been any uh, of the fruit and vegetable organ, I don't know whether lettuce is a fruit or a vegetable. All I know is, is that we've had a great let us experience. And I'm grateful to God for you and the work that you have done. Let me thank also the music entity tonight. Uh, he's a son of this church and a son of mine. Amen. When I first encountered him, you had to stand him up on a box. That he could stand up, he preached. Uh, not, well, he didn't preach. He might as well say he preached. But when the National Baptist Convention was here, I believe in 2003, which has been now almost 20 years ago, um, the world was mesmerized by this little fella who could stand up on that box and just kill the house here in the Detroit, Michigan, and represent it well. And he's been singing the songs of Zion ever since. It's always good to have him home. And we're grateful for the delegation that came along with him. Y'all celebrate my son. Won't you, Kevin Stewart? Thank you so much for being here. And anytime you can get that fella come over to see me, if you get that's extra credit. Hey, Amen. I, I, he won't. I don't know why he won't come see his elder brother, but he came by. But thank you for the music tonight, hey, Amen. So much. He's just always a joy to be able to see him. He's in and out. And Detroit does a great work. I think he's still at the Triumph Church, but uh, I'm grateful to God for you and work you've done, and all of y'all who's over here doing music tonight. You know, y'all make that stuff sound good over there. I'm gonna tell my son and Dexter and them, they better make sure they stay woke, because if they mess up, I think I got a crew. Let me just stay right on in there. I wanna thank Minister Doris Montgomery, who was tagged with giving leadership for pulling this together. And we wanna be able to thank you so much for your capacity to work with whoever you had to do. I know working with black folk ain't no easy thing, no matter what you're trying to do. Uh, you got to fight us to fight with us and for us. But thank you for your sacrifice. And uh, I want to thank also uh, the Liberty Temple Baptist Church family, because whatever I've done in any capacity, a pastor can only do based on what their support system staff and work does because my number one call, God didn't call me to be a moderator. He didn't call me to be a state president. He didn't call me to be council president. These are things that my peers and those who I serve have uh, offered a point of selection and support and election in order for me to ascend to that work. And I trust whatever capacity I've done, I've done it to the best of my capacity, but I'm called to preach the gospel. And I've been called to serve as a pastor of the Lord's people. And I've tried to keep that as a priority in all that I seek to do. I'm uh, both a presbyteros, a episcopos, and a poimen, an elder that leads God's people with wisdom and knowledge, one who oversees and has oversight of the management of the work of the church, and then poimen means shepherd of God's sheep. But the under-shepherd role can only be done if the sheep follow the shepherd. Can I get you to help me to lift up Liberty Temple, amen, to Dyke and all of his leadership. And I commend them in that way. And then even if all of y'all fail, I thank God that I got a family that will follow me somewhere and everywhere, Brother May. And I'm grateful to God for them. God has gifted them so much in various ways. They are all serving tonight somewhere blessing the people of God, and I told them, go right ahead and do it. And uh, me and somebody who I've been now, come this November, traversing with in marriage 40 years. Amen, I'm grateful for the fact. She wanted uh, me to receive all the honor of, that would be given tonight, so she didn't want to be seen where uh, the shadow would go to anybody other than me. But even no matter where she sits, she's still who she is. But I'm grateful for her humility to want me to be able to receive the honor tonight. But let me just expose the fact that Lady Bland is sitting right over there and give God praise, amen, for the fact 
Amen. That she is serving sin. Thank you for your support. So often and many times when a pastor, moderator, president, or whatever you may do, have to leave out the door, uh, I'm grateful that there's been somebody who can hold down the family. The children are now of age uh, where they can handle themselves, but there was a time when as they were babies, uh, they had to be nurtured, cared for, and I'm grateful that we didn't have uh, slumlord family leadership. Uh, I'm grateful that we gave the best we had in doing so. And, uh, and so I'm thankful tonight uh, for the fact that those of you who have allowed me to share this time of leadership in whatever way or capacity, that you understood that there were times when I had to maybe say no because there was a greater yes to be said. And I'm grateful to the call of God and the work of ministry that gives us this capacity to lead. Now, there's church tomorrow for most of you. I hope it is at least. So you're not going to let this be your worship for the weekend. But there's a place you all go, amen. If not, you can take a nap on the pew. We'll be going right back again in just a few hours right here at 8 o'clock a.m. at the Greeted 8 service at Liberty Temple. So I want to just say to you uh, as we close this service that dark clouds are again looming overhead. As we saw earlier today, no matter how the sun shines, it can sometimes be interrupted and cut off by tempestuous winds, turbulent times. Injustice and racism are beginning to play with each other like June bugs on a summer day. And as we look to see what has been on the horizon, but now is making itself clear and clear in its hatred voice. I've tried to help you understand, if I didn't do anything else as a district association, that the emphasis should not just be on the worship experiences when many associations growing up whenever the district association met some preacher was preaching and the churches would come and they take time doing those things every month and make that happen and again I honor the traditions of our ancestors because that's what kept the church alive that's what kept us together that's what kept us growing give God praise for the ancestral vision of all of those who had those associations that came around to do so but uh, Issachar, this biblical name that talks about how you have to discern the times. And one of the things that came as a result of the work 10 years ago as we came into this work was to be able to have people who not just met for meeting and greeting and eating, but to look with some vision as to how the church could make a difference in the community and the world. For we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Not the salt of a building and the light of religious people. And I'm grateful because, if nothing else, when we gathered to meet bi monthly, when we had training services and vision sessions every year, we came to talk about how the emphasis of everything we would do, we would sit together and vision and plan because vision and thoughts are the ancestor of a deed. So it was no accident that a united vision would take place ahead of the trouble that manifests itself. As it was stated already, we didn't know a Flint water crisis would come. But in the midst of having a devilish governor who would hide his hands, we thank God for people who would rise up and give water to God's people in Flint and those in this district association. Because you came, other people had a ripple effect and they came. We began to give clothes to children who needed coats during the winter time for school, uniforms to have on. I got a call from the school just even since they've been back to school that they still have young people who are proud of the uniforms that Michigan District bought for 600 students. Many of them never had one that was clean of their own. And they could look on with pride because of you. I could go down the list of others, the Haiti conditions and other things that have taken place. We have not just been a church that did church in church, but we've been a district that could please God by being who he called us to be. As he called us and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me 
and caused me to preach the gospel and everything he did was in the world. Let me pause and just give God glory and also a moment of tribute and a moment of memory to one who also ascended with me at the beginning of this work. Ten years ago, when the call came, I was actually in Los Angeles, California. And someone called and asked me what I consider being moderator of this great August body. <clears throat> I made a call from there to a gentleman by the name of Robert Smith, who was serving at that time as the interim moderator after the heavenly ascension of moderator Kelly. And I want to give God praise for Pastor Robert Smith, amen, for his capacity in the work in Shannon. For he said to me even then, I said to him, I've received the call, but I refuse to cast my name if you are interested or if you are situated to be the next moderator, which is my support. He said to me these words, Moderator Bland, I believe you ought to be my moderator. And from that moment, because I had his support, right. he has always supported this work. And we've supported the work he has continued to do, whether it be in Haiti or wherever it's done. And I thank God for people like Robert Smith, who was a selfless leader in dealing with that work. I thank God for his wife, Cynthia Smith, because the truth is it was a bunch of women that kept this district together after Moderator Kelly passed. It was a group of them that kept the work of ministry from falling apart. Some who are sitting here today, one who may be watching by camera, but she also gave great leadership and helped keep this work going even during a pandemic. Give God praise for Reverend Patty Dexter, who led and leads our women and its work. People like that, that makes the difference. And then also, let me just give credit to one who peeks over the banisters of glory, who called me and said, I heard you're going to run for moderator and shared. I said, well, I'm gonna cast my name. I ain't running for nothing but Jesus, but if it ascends, that would be fine. But she ascended that she wanted to also cast her name as president of the Congress for Michigan District. And as she peeks over heaven's banister right now, I would that you would also remember with me, Pastor Wilma Johnson who was the person who ascended to the do the work with me as the first Congress female president of this work. And I'm thankful. Never forget the people who again bridge with you to do a great work. Let me also just, so he doesn't probably, um, again, and, and forgive me for not saying uh, to our state leadership, our state Congress president who also was part of this work uh, President Mosley is a pastor of that, and he's always been supportive as a district pastor. He came and joined under this watch, and I'm grateful to him for his continued. He also is serving as the chair of the nominating committee that will help ascend uh, the next leadership of this district as it goes forth. So I would that you would pray for he and those persons, anybody who's on that nominating committee that's in the house, stand on your feet so people know where the object of their prayer ought to be going. Amen. And, sharing with this work as they continue to do so. Not only is the call for better, but greater. Jesus said, greater things shall you do. My call to you as you go forward in Jesus' name is if this work has been done of God, then greater is in store for each of us. God bless you and may he keep you is our prayer. Liberty Temple, see y'all in the morning. As we ask Pastor Chapman to come and bless us with the final blessings, let me thank again Reverend Doris Montgomery, Reverend Michael Evans, every leader of Michigan District Association, our tech team, our audio team, our music team, Everybody that played a part in making this night what it has been. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Chap. Let us stand.
The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The people of God said amen.